In the headlines, two Rocky Mountain firefighters are suspended and demoted after drunk driving arrests. A Georgia man is brought down after he is accused of a series of hit and runs. And we have an update in the death of an area woman who was found dead in her home late last year. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak starting now. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. Hello, hope you had a great 4th of July holiday. You're watching WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. I'm Marie Torres. First, an update in the death of an area woman who was found dead in her home late last year. According to a detailed medical examiner's report released to us last week, the cause of death for 22-year-old Amy Pitt of Tarboro is by hanging. The medical examiner's report out of their Greenville lab also shows Pitt, who was found in the closet of the home she shared with her boyfriend, Ben Harrelson, had elevated levels of coca ethylene, a mix of cocaine and possible alcohol use. Other than a ligature to her neck from the hanging, the report showed no other fatal injury or illness. Pitt's body was found weeks after she was first reported missing. Both Tarboro Police and the State Bureau of Investigation have been handling this case. Police have yet to reveal if they are looking at this case as a suicide. In other news, authorities need your help in tracking down an alleged purse snatcher. According to Rocky Mountain Police, Sunday afternoon, 24-year-old Joshua DeMont Alston reportedly approached an elderly woman in the parking lot of Golden East Crossing Mall and stole her purse. During the heist, the victim says Alston pushed her down. It's believed he then fled the scene in a gray Dodge Intrepid. Warrants are now out on Alston for assault on a female and felony larceny. We've learned the victim did suffer major your bruising and pain. If you know his whereabouts, you're urged to contact Crime Stoppers at 252-977-1111. A Georgia man is brought down after he is accused of a series of hit and runs. Sunday afternoon, North Carolina state troopers arrested 36-year-old Stephen Carter along I-95 in Nash County. Carter, who was the driver of a 2001 Toyota Sienna, allegedly hit several cars in Johnson County, several more in Wilson County, and a couple in Nash County before troopers began chasing him at around 1.30 near NC-97. According to authorities, no one was seriously injured in these crimes. They also say Carter admitted to smoking marijuana laced with cocaine and taking several prescription medications. He also told authorities that he was heading to his mother's house in Virginia for a birthday party. Carter is being held in Nash County Jail under a $20,000 secured bond. Troopers say he allegedly reached speeds of 100 miles per hour. Sunday morning, a couple was hospitalized after being involved in a crash. The couple, 54-year-old Linda Ann Whitaker and her husband, 59-year-old Jimmy Whitaker, crashed at the intersection of Bass Chapel Road and NC-258. Their Chevrolet Monte Carlo turned overturned and pinned Mr. Whitaker in. Authorities say Mrs. Whitaker was driving when she failed to stop for a stop sign, ran through the intersection, struck a ditch, then thrown into Bats Chapel Cemetery where the car flipped and came on its roof. Both were treated and released from the hospital. As of yet, no charges have been filed. And two Rocky Mountain firefighters are suspended and demoted after drunk driving arrests. According to Assistant Fire Chief Mike Varnell, George Pridgent and Jason Bland were both suspended for four-day shifts after violating policy. This stems from state troopers' arrest of Bland in Nash County back in January, while Pridgent was arrested and charged with DWI in late April. Both arrests occurred while the men were off duty. Pridgent was demoted from fire engineer to fire firefighter last month. He's been with Rocky Mount Fire Department since 1983. Last month, Bland 
was demoted from senior firefighter to firefighter. He worked with the department for nearly four years. Bland's court date is July 27th, while Pridgent's is August the 2nd. When we return on news break, in a grand reception, many said farewell, farewell to Rocky Mount Chief of Police John Manley Jr. We'll bring you the coverage of that event right after these words. It's back for a limited time. Every new Buick and GMC at Davenport Auto Park is being offered at the GM employee price. Combined with factory incentives, now you can drive out for up to $5,000 below dealer invoice amount. And that's not all. With Davenport's dealership for life, you can even get a free lifetime warranty. Plus free oil changes, rotations, and more for no extra charge. Employee price, rebates up to $5,000, free lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer ends soon, only at Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. Still your dealership for life. Country Inn & Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn & Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Welcome back to WHIG TV Newsbreak. I'm Marie Torres. It's a sigh of relief for residents in Edgecombe County who will not see an increase in the property tax rate this fiscal year. Friday, the 2011-2012 $58.5 million budget, which was unanimously approved by the county's Board of Commissioners, went into effect. To substitute tax increases in an effort to balance the budget, the county will spend more than $5 million in reserves. According to County Manager Lorenzo Carmen, general fund spending will increase by more than $100,000 from the last fiscal year budget. In addition to, in addition to budgeting the $2.8 million in sales taxes revenues, the tax rate of $0.86 cents per $100 in valuation will generate $26.3 million in revenue for the county. And after 32 years of service to the area, those from near and far came out to show their appreciation to now-retired Rocky Mount Chief of Police John Manley. The reception held at the Imperial Center Thursday afternoon was packed with Manley supporters who included family, friends, church members, co-workers, and local and state officials. Of some of those in attendance were U.S. Marshal Scott Parker and the former mayor of Rocky Mount, Frederick E. Turnage. Here are some of what his backers had to say. His door was always open for me, and I always knew that I would necessarily get the answer that I wanted to hear, but I would get the answer I needed to hear. And I knew it was accurate and it was forthright. So John, we, we are grateful for what you have meant to this community. I know that you are looking forward to time with your family and you deserve it. And we want to all wish you the very best and thank you for everything. I thought about an old movie uh, that Clint Eastwood was in, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Um, and it's not a Western, but you know, in 30 years, I know you've seen the good because there's a lot of good people out here that do a lot of good things in this community. I know you have seen the bad because there's a lot of bad folks out here too. But I know you've also seen some things that were pretty ugly and, and you wouldn't want to share it with anybody else. 
And that's what our police department does. They go where other people don't want to go, where I don't want to go. And I can tell you, I rode one night with them when I was running for mayor, and we pulled up a club, and there were a couple of police officers there, and there were about to be a, a, a confrontation there, and they said, stay in the car. And I said, I'm not getting out of the car, don't worry. <laughs> But you could see how quick it could escalate and how easy it was to get out of hand, but they controlled it so effectively. But I wouldn't have wanted to be there. I wouldn't have wanted to do that job. So I want to thank you all for doing it, for doing that tough job that a lot of other people don't want to do. But on behalf of City Council, myself, we want to wish you the best of luck in retirement. I'm not sure what your wife thinks about it. You're young now, so she's going to probably find something else for you to do, but thank you for sharing him with us. Thank you for the great job you've done for the city, and just good luck on your retirement. As David Combs was saying a few minutes ago, this, this is one of the most challenging jobs, public service jobs, at the municipal level that anybody could think of. Um, and it's challenging for several reasons. One is there's no escape from several things. There's no escape from the scrutiny that a police chief receives. Uh, people are out there looking. You're in a giant fish fishbowl and everybody's looking in, watching and waiting and judging to see how well you respond to this situation and to that situation. So there's no escape from that scrutiny. The second thing is that the police business is an information business. It's all about information flowing in and it all flows to the top and it goes into Chief's head. He has to evaluate what to do about these situations that come in. These situations are constantly unfolding and they just don't happen between 8 and 5 during the daytime, Monday through Friday. They happen all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and on holidays and everything. And so that is a load to carry, is, is how to bear that scrutiny and to be able to respond to these situations that, that happen all the time. John has handled that very well. He's been a model for me and I think for others uh, as, we, as we look at that. This department, John is a police officer's police officer. Now some of the officers might not think that because if they do something wrong, he will deal with them. Um, but when they do good, he's quick to praise them. But if they do wrong, uh, he will chastise them and hand out the discipline that he needs to, to do that. But he's always thinking about what's best for this community. And, and I will tell you that around Christmas time, John would need to take vacation time so that he wouldn't lose the vacation. But even during the time that he was on vacation, he was still policing. And this is probably about four years ago. He was supposed to be on vacation on New Year's Eve, and some of his command staff might remember this. He called them up and asked them how many cars they had on the street. He asked them what was going on. So despite him being off, he was still dealing with what was going on in the city. And I don't think he had to do that but one time because they knew that he was very serious about what was supposed to take place from the police department's perspective. The other thing I will tell you is that when you're dealing with some of these bad things and some of the ugly things that the mayor talked about, I remember a homicide. I think it was the first homicide we had this year. And John told me that morning, he said, the person that did this lives not far from the area where the person, the body was found. And he was within about five blocks of where the suspect lived. So he knows policing, and that's with 32 years of experience. And then the other thing John did is, John postponed his retirement by a year. John's plan was to retire last year. And he told me that the only reason he didn't retire last year was because Chief Keith Harris had announced his retirement. And he didn't want to put us in the position of having to find two chiefs in one year. So John, I really do appreciate that. I did, I, I, I wanted 
wanted to um, take this opportunity to really thank Chief Manley for his 32 years of service. He leaves a police department that is in excellent shape. He has provided guidance to, his, to the police department, and the police department is prepared to serve this community over the next 32 years. And so, Chief, I have a few remarks except to say congratulations on your retirement. Best wishes to you and to Evelyn for a wonderful life ahead. Don't be a stranger. Come see us, and thank you very much. And while trying to hold back tears, Manley says that it was his family, his faith in God, and the prayers of his community who brought him through his lengthy career. You can't do this thing by yourself. You really need a, uh, true, a lot of people around you to help support. And that's what I've had. I've had a lot of support, a lot of people praying. Um, uh, Minister Dickens came over just a few minutes ago and told me that his mother said that she was going to continue to pray for me. And I'm going to tell you something I have, Pastor Alice met Mike Dickens praying for you. She would call down to the police department and drop that line on that phone and I'm going to tell you, you know you had been prayed for. And then First Baptist Church, you realize, some of you don't realize, I've told people, I was in my office one afternoon working past uh, hours and some said, John, go down the back way. <clears throat> I never would go out the building the back way because I felt that was just a way to try to escape, Mr. Barney. So you have to face this thing square to square. But some say you need to go down the back side of the building. And I went down the back side. And as I walked out into the parking lot, there was these, and y'all don't take this wrong, there was these six white ladies. <laughs> said, Chief, we've been praying for you. That's okay. She said, we've been walking and praying. We've been walking and praying. We were all around the city. She said, we just left from First Baptist Church. She said, can we pray for you? So I got right in the middle of the circle. They circled me and cars passing by and everybody looking at me and said, what are these six white ladies doing surrounding this black man? <laughs> it was prayer, y'all. I appreciate that. And I don't know who they were. I just know that they were a godsend. Uh, it's a lot of times when you're going through things, people just don't know. But they were sent. And I can give you story after story like that, but it, it'll get me tear at it. <clears throat> so I ain't gonna go there. But the truth of the matter is I have really, truly enjoyed doing what I do. I am going to enjoy my retirement. People think I can't do it, but watch me. At the end of the ceremony, Mayor David Combs and city council members helped Manley retire his service weapon and badge. Manley says that though he will enjoy his retirement, he will also remain devoted to serving his community through other endeavors. To take his place is interim chief of police for the city of Rocky Mount, former Captain Jim Thomas. We congratulate both of them on their transitions. After the break, it's a look at sports and weather. Stay with us. It's back for a limited time. Every new Buick and GMC at Davenport Auto Park is being offered at the GM employee price. Combined with factory incentives, now you can drive out for up to $5,000 below dealer invoice amount. And that's not all. With Davenport's dealership for life, you can even get a free lifetime warranty. Plus free oil changes, rotations, and more for no extra charge. Employee price, rebates up to $5,000, free lifetime warranty. See if anybody beats that deal. But hurry, this offer ends soon, only at Davenport Auto Park in Rocky Mount. Still your dealership for life. When it's happening to you, you'll hear from us. WHIG-TV Newsbreak is reporting on the news, issues, and stories that matter to you. Call us at 252-885-1814, email us at marie.whigtv at gmail.com, or check us streaming live at whigtv.com. We're your voice, ready to bring you the news. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, 
and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. back with a look at weather. Here's WHIG-TV meteorologist Fred Holtzworth. Fred? Well, here we are on July the 5th and quite a bit of natural fireworks last night and as we go through today we'll see that the thunderstorm activity will start to pick up again during the evening and we may just see some more of what we saw last night. Low pressure in the upper atmosphere is contributing to the development of these storms and they should be with us pretty much through Saturday. And as we go through the week we'll see those temperatures just about where we would expect them in July in the 90s but they will most likely be the lower 90s and not the upper 90s like we saw yesterday but I guess that's traditional for July 4th you expect quite a warm day. Well let's take a look at our forecast map and see what we can expect for the remainder of today. We have a warm front which becomes stationary right off the coast and low pressure forming along this front giving a an added incentive we'll say to the development of showers and thunderstorms showers and thunderstorms will be found all through the southeast down to the gulf coast through the peninsula of florida and on up as far as the state of Maine all the way up here the only exempt area today would be the uh, eastern portion of New England right in here Massachusetts Rhode Island Connecticut that area they will uh, probably not see any rain today the severe area out here in the west we have uh, in Kansas from central Kansas westward all the way into Colorado this is associated with low pressure along a stationary front and that's the front that actually comes through northern Virginia dips down into Tennessee and then across into Kansas low pressure out in the western United States will kick off some rain and thunderstorms from central California southward all the way down through the uh, Baja Peninsula of Mexico and in the desert southwest and hopefully this will uh, aid those firefighters out in the southwest that have been battling those wildfires in Arizona and New Mexico for quite some time. Well let's take a look at our forecast. Today, slight chance of showers and thunderstorms, 92 for the high, west wind at 7. Scattered showers and thunderstorms tonight with a low of 72, winds will be calm. Chance of afternoon showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday with a high of 89, south wind at 8. Wednesday night, showers and thunderstorms with a low of 72, a south wind at 5. Thursday, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a high of 90, southwest wind at 7. Thursday night, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 72. Chance of showers and thunderstorms again on Friday with a high of 90. For Friday night, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 72. And Saturday, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a high of 88 and a low of 71. Our high yesterday, 97. Our low this morning was 71. 57 hundredths of an inch of rain during the past 24 hours. Our local records for this date, the high temperature for this date in Rocky Mount occurred back in 1989 with a high of 97 and the low was 54 degrees 
That was back in 1963. And looking around the country yesterday, the warmest spot in the country was 107 degrees at Coalinga, California. And the low, 34 degrees, that was shared by Stanley, Idaho, and Pahaska, Washington. And that's your weather right up to now. Thank you, Fred. And here with me now to talk sports is Edward Green. Tell us what's the latest, Edward. Well, Marie, we had a really great weekend, a lot of fun activities going on around town, and uh, we actually got a little bit of the fireworks at the Rocky Mountain Sports Complex right. this past weekend, so you can look for that in this uh, upcoming week to see that on WHIG. But first, got some other fireworks to talk about. Mm. Well, we hope everyone was able to enjoy those fireworks, even though Monday uh, had a few storms going on. But Major League Baseball is making sure that you will have more in the future. A long-standing event gets a new twist added on this year for the All-Star festivities. First, though, let's take the looker, the starter, sorry, for both leagues for the 20. 11 All-Star Game. Starting in the American League with a lot of familiar faces, least of which though might be the name at the top. Alex Avila has been having a great season for Detroit behind the plate, hitting just under 300 while throwing out better than one-third of attempted base stealers. Red Sox first baseman Adrian Gonzalez is trying for the Triple Crown, enjoying his move to Boston in the more friendly confines. And he will be joined in the infield by three rival Yankees, second baseman Robinson Cano, third baseman Alex Rodriguez, and shortstop Derek Jeter. Now Jeter has been silent lately with an injury and only Monday returned to action, so it will be interesting if he will be able to go for the game next Tuesday. Another Yankee, Curtis Granderson, will be in the outfield along with Texas slugger Josh Hamilton, a North Carolina native, and Jose Bautista, the Blue Jay that leads the majors in home runs and set a new record with over 7.4 million votes. David Ortiz is enjoying a bounce back season and will be the DH. Now over in the National League, the uh, Braves catcher Brian McCann gets the nod behind the plate. A pair of Brewers will be holding down one side of the infield as Prince Fielder will man first base and Ricky Weeks, making his first all-star start, will play second. Phillies third baseman Placido Polanco will start on the opposite side of the diamond. And while Mets shortstop Jose Reyes has been electric and was voted in by the fans, he has been dealing with the hamstring issue the past few weeks, so it is unclear yet if he will be able to go. The outfield may not be the fastest in the world, but they do pack a punch, with a third Brewers starter Ryan Braun joining the Cardinals Lance Berkman and the Dodgers Matt Kemp, with the three combining to have hit 60 home runs this season. Now, these are the starters, and now we will take a look at another fan vote. This one is for the last man in. After reserves and pitchers were named, five players from each league that did not make the cut can now be voted on to see who will make the roster. In the American League, the choices are outfielders Alex Gordon from Kansas City and Adam Jones from Baltimore, Paul Canerico from Chicago, who is on the list for the third straight season, catcher Victor Martinez for Detroit, and super utility player Ben Zobrist from Tampa Bay. Out of the National League come Dodgers outfielder Andre Ethier, Rockies first baseman Todd Helton, D-backs pitcher Ian Kennedy, Nashville, Nationals first baseman Michael Morse, and Phillies outfielder Shane Victorino. The current leaders are Canerco in the AL and Victorino in the NL, and you have until Thursday to vote. And finally, the Home Run Derby will be Monday, and in a twist this year, MLB has announced that captains will make the rosters. David Ortiz is the captain for the American League, and he has already made his selections. Jose Bautista, teammate Adrian Gonzalez, and Robinson Cano. Prince Fielder is captaining the NL, but has yet to officially make a pick, although he has said that Matt Kemp will be on if Kemp accepts. And also under consideration are Fielder's teammate Ryan Braun, Cardinals Lance Berkman and Matt Holliday, and Cincinnati's Jay Bruce and Joey Votto, among others. So, Marie, a bit of a new wrinkle and a great new event, which will see El uh, Ligua come out on top, of course. And for the winning All-Star team, their league will get home field advantage in the World Series. So a lot to play for. All right. Well, good. Thank you so much, Edward. No problem. That's going to do it for us here today on News Break. Join us again Thursday for more news that's impacting the community. For WHIG-TV, I'm Marie Torres. We'll see you next time.